Hi guys, how's it going? Ivane here with a new series where I answer questions by players who are new to PvP. So this series is called Noob Questions, but the idea is not to make fun of newbies here, because everyone is a noob at something at some point, and that's good. Asking questions is how you learn, how you get better at anything. And for sure, when I first started out PvPing in this game, I wished that there was something like this. So if you have any noob questions, put them in the comments below and I might answer them right there or maybe in a future video. But without further ado, let's get into the question of today. What is better for PvP dot or burst? And when we talk about that, of course, first of all, we have to define what is dot and what is burst. So dot, of course, stands for damage over time. And while all classes in the game have some abilities that do damage over time, when people talk about dot classes, typically they mean classes that primarily do dot damage. So most of the damage will come over a period of, let's say, 18 seconds. So this would be your Madness Sorcerer, Hatred Assassin, or for example, Lethality Operatives. On the other hand, burst classes are classes that do a lot of damage in a short amount of time, and then not so much afterwards. We can see an example of this in my recent video, which is called 300k damage in two seconds. So check it out, I'll link it in the description below. But burst classes typically would be your AP power tech, your engineering sniper, or a deception assassin. Now, what is better for PvP? Well, the answer to that one is it depends. It depends on what do you want to do in a certain fight and of course also who you are fighting. Dot classes excel at putting pressure on an enemy heal and tank. That's because dots in this game are mostly internal damage, meaning they are not mitigated by tank stats. So dot damage kills tanks and healers through guard, but very slowly. And that's because even the best healers in this game can not realistically do much more than 30k healing per second. And if on your team you have three dot DPS classes, each of them doing 15k DPS, then, you know, that's more than 30k. So the whole enemy team is going to die and there is nothing that their healer can do about it because the DPS pressure from your dots is simply overwhelming. Of course, the downside of dot classes is that the damage comes in rather slowly. So you give the enemy time to react to what you're doing. And that is also where burst classes have an advantage because burst, as I already said, a lot of damage in a short window of time excels at killing a single target quickly before they even know what hit them. So playing a burst class properly is all about timing your abilities right, stacking your cooldowns, knowing your class, knowing the enemy class, and even tracking what defensive cooldowns they might have available or not. The advantage of burst classes then is that it's really hard for the enemy healers to react because a burst class can do up to 60k DPS over those three to five, six seconds where they're bursting. And no healer in the game can even come close to that. So you know, if you have multiple burst classes, they can blow up a target and the healer can just look at the health bar vanishing. But the weakness of burst classes is that they are countered by guard, which is somewhat unique mechanic, which makes Star Wars The Old Republic PvP different to most other PvP games because it means that 50% of the damage that the target would receive will be transferred to the tank. So playing against Burst requires a good tank that knows how to swap guard to counter them. That tank also needs to put the guard on the right target in the right moment, needs to anticipate the incoming Burst, so it's quite a skillful thing. To sum it up, dot classes are better at killing healers and tanks. Burst is better at killing people quickly and winning a team fight before it even begins. But if you can't kill them quickly, then you might be in trouble. That's it for today, guys. If you have any other questions that you would like me to answer, please put them in the comments below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.